Hello guys, welcome to the next movie. Many of you are familiar with Buff and BBS HD motor that is available on the market since 2015. Many people praise this motor for its power, reliability and ease of installation. But uh, there is one feature missing that people are asking uh, for many years. And I'm talking here about a uh, torque sensor. Many different companies uh, introduced motors with this function, but Bafunk was very reluctant uh, to improve design of BBS HD over the years. So finally, a new company from China called uh, 27 designed a mid-drive motor that is almost identical in construction to BBS HD and is equipped with a torque sensor. And they call it a DM01, and you can see it here. What is interesting, uh, lead designer of this motor is former Tongsheng uh, lead engineer. So this that explains uh, why there are so many uh, features integrated from a BBS HD motor and a TSDZ2 in this design. So I think this uh, length introduction is sufficient and you are interested uh, to how this motor looks like in detail. So. Let's delve into this now. Let's take a look on the elements of the whole set. So here you can see the packaging. The motor has arrived. What is funny, they included this uh, torque shank uh, installation instruction. So it's Good proof that the guys uh, from Tongsha were involved in uh, designing this motor. <laughs> no. So they took the features of uh, BBS HD with their uh, torque sensing technology, as I understand. As you can see, you can see straight away a lot of similarities uh, for the controller. The shape format is almost identical as in the BBS HD motor. Here is the cabling. The main uh, connector to the display and uh, gas is identical as uh, in CYC motors. You have this Juliet plugs for a speed sensor. And also for the shift sensor, the second connector. Uh, here are the power cables. Uh, here you can see the design of the interface for the chain ring. So as you can see, I'll try to uh, open it. It's locked, I cannot do it with the hand. Yeah. So the mounting uh, is uh, different than in a BBS HD. They use these uh, slots and then the chain rig is secured in place by this ring over here. Unfortunately the axle is this old-fashioned square taper style. Many people will complain on it. But you know, I don't see any problem with it, you know. As long as you keep you know, screws tight and the pedals will, s will not start wiggling, then you will not destroy this axle. Yeah. Yeah, here you can see the back side. So the mounting method is almost identical. Like in uh, BBS HD or BBS uh, 02 motors. And uh, unlike the two tongue motor, you don't need to Fasten the motor with this idiotic you know, uh, bracket, which is causing a lot of problems with many bikes due to lack of access and so on. Here you can see this. It's a plastic cap securing the threads. Worth to mention uh, the size of the bottom bracket. Uh, on the website uh, of PSP Power, they are saying there will be two versions. Uh, but I was able to buy only this uh, 6873BSA type uh, bottom bracket. 
And there will be like version uh, available for fat bikes with 100 millimeters distance. Uh, they are not saying anything about 120 version, but uh, this 100 millimeter interface is the most common on fat bikes, so it should be all right. It all depends on this size and how much clearance you have to the chain stay. If the frame is quite uh, narrow, then you shouldn't have any troubles with fitting this motor. This uh, main gear size is quite compact. I'll measure it for use uh, soon. Yeah. So going further, you have standard cabling, gas, the interconnectors to display and uh, brake sensors. Here is the speed sensor, uh, free connectors plug, no, nothing fancy. It's shift sensor, since this motor is having torque sensor and then this is not required. Here is the display, it's a completely new type, I haven't seen this before. Don't remember the name of it. Maybe it's written on the back. Yeah, T24. Uh, the controller in the motor is capable of working with uh, 48 uh, nominal, uh, 48 volt and nominal batteries. Uh, there is no information if you could you know, crank up the voltage to 52. Probably it's possible. They are these old-fashioned you know, uh, levers with uh, brake sensors. I will not use it. I have this uh, connectors or like sensors which can glue to the hydraulic brakes. This will go to rubbish. Yeah. Okay, so let's go further with the details. I'll show you now how the motor is constructed more in detail. So I will start from the left side, non-drive side. So I remove this mounting bracket. So the axle is pretty standard like in VBS HD or Tongsheng. Here we have this hose for screws for this metal bracket which is installed over here. Yeah. So using spacers you can adjust the size of your bottom bracket. Starting from 6, 68 up to 73 they write. Yeah. And as I see there is not much more threads to be able to use for instance 83 millimeter brackets. Yeah. But they will have like this 100 millimeter motor version so shouldn't be any problem then. Afterwards. As you can see motor doesn't have fins, so it's hard to tell now how it will behave you know, under big power, how fast it will heat up. The motor is pretty heavy, it's almost 6 kilos, so probably it shouldn't be a big problem with like uh, heat accumulation or overheating. Here you can see the drive side of the motor. This cover is plastic, pretty standard for these motors. The interface is much more improved. So you have this, these slots for the chain ring adapter. What I notice, uh, we have this uh, double clutch mechanism. So it's quite fairly easy to rotate the axle both ways. There's just minor resistance when you are turning the cranks on the axle uh, towards like a driving direction. In uh, BBS HD or Tongsheng motors, this old version, not the second one, you don't have double clutch mechanism, so it's actually al almost impossible to turn the axle with your bare hands. Yeah. But here, as you can see, very easy. 
Okay, some details for the controller. I see screws over here. And there are extra over there. Without opening it, I don't know what is the reason for it. But we need to unscrew these ones to take out the controller. So probably you have something inside that you can remove. Maybe you can just take out the interior of the controller, because this is just a housing. Well, it could be like this. Quite smart. So, in case of a controller failure, uh, you can just order direct internal electronics. And you can save some money uh, on this uh, metal housing. Show you quickly how this training is mounted. So you need to align the slots. Pops in, and then you need to use this lock ring. Uh, if you need to turn it counterclockwise in the same fashion like in the Bosch, Yamaha, or Shimano motors. So. Be careful if you would like to take it off. So you, you don't turn it like a normal screws. You need to go other way around. So if it's locked, you can use this tool and then you need to rotate this way. So then it opens. I will say something about the chain ring. As you can see, it's using this 5 bolts uh, mounting system. And the spacing is identical as in a Tonshank chain ring. The size here is 46 teams. This chain ring is from Tonshank motor 42. As you can see, the BCD is identical. Don't remember exactly how much it was. 104 millimeters, maybe. Yeah. But you can easily swap the elements. And here is the cover from Tongsheng motor. And suits perfectly this as well. And that's a good thing because this original one is like a narrow type version. But since there is a lot of aftermarket chain rings with narrow white teeth, there, will be any, there won't be any problem actually to purchase a replacement this original one. That's very good. Keeps to keep in retention the chain place. I was very interested how the controller looks like. So here it is. As you can see it's uh, fully potted. Here are the face wires. They're fairly thin unfortunately. But we will see how this affects the motor. It comes on with only one capacitor. And that's not good indication of the torque. But yeah, we'll see how it delivers. The motor is bulky, like in buff of FSHD. So maybe it will deliver, as promised. These screws that you can see on the perimeter of the housing here. You know, Keeping or uh, attracting uh, to the housing this uh, uh, heat conducting plate, or metal plate basically. But you have in the uh, MOSFETs bolted towards this. So it looks like you know if you cut off you know this potting, you will be able to remove the whole controller from this metal housing. Yeah, but like I can see straight away it's like really well waterproof protected. Shouldn't be any problem with water ingress. There is extra seal on the perimeter to prevent the water ingress towards this the stator. So you can see the connectors for the phase lines. This cable goes to torque sensor, and here is the cabling for hole sensor.
Here you can see the interiors of the stator and the rotor. So design I think similar to Bafang. Yeah. So here you can see the interface for the whole sensors uh, and phase lines. You can see whole sensors exposed over here. Oh, be difficult to see it for you probably. But they are easily accessible on this plastic plate. There are three of them. As usual. Here is the gearbox interface. Famous blue gear I see again. Yeah. It's behind this plate, so it's possible to replace it in case it gets damaged. Here you can see the cable going to the this one going to the torque sensor. Oh. I will try not to open it now. So it's quite common construction between these motors. So looks probably identical like in the Bafang BBS HD with the difference of the torque sensor. I don't want to dismantle the whole motor, but uh, since this gearbox is quite easy and accessible, to, I just took off the cover. So as you can see, design is pretty familiar. Same thing as in the Bafang motors in Tongsheng. There are some just weird uh, shape uh, beings or lorries all around this assembly. But that's the main difference I see. Plus this interface for the chainring. Uh. So a lot of good ideas actually. Proven solutions I would say from other motors. Here is the cover with rubber gasket around. Yeah. And that's it. I showed the interiors of the motor. So now I will show you how it operates. So I connected the motor to power supply. And uh, you can see the display over here, the gas throttle, and the speed sensor. So, you just start the system like in every motor with this power on button. You need to hold it like two seconds. And then you will see the interface screen. Very simple, small. So you can you have speed indication, uh, how much uh, power, or it's actually uh, the voltage or like a state of charge of the battery. It's, uh, assistance levels, you know, uh, measuring uh, the power of the motor on the left side. Here is the distance. If I just switch off the light, maybe. Oh, sorry. Let me come back. Yeah. So on the right side is like a percentage of the power. And at the top you can see this uh, sport mode, echo mode, and trip mode, city mode. Yeah. So there are three uh, power modes as I see it. Oh. Uh, I will just show you how the torque sensor works. Maybe I will just go to f level 5 and sport. And then you see the motor is reacting on the speed of rotating the pedal. Uh, however, like in all uh, Bafang uh, controllers, if uh, it's Control doesn't sense that uh, wheel is rotating. You get you start getting the error message, and then motor goes into this protection mode. You can say so. 
slowly rotating on pedaling. But it doesn't hurt to operate the, the, the gas throttle. So you can regulate the speed even with this arrow blinking on the screen. So that's the only thing. So this whole uh, torque sensitivity I can be I'll be able to test when in the motor is installed on the bike. So I can say it's like having good sensitivity. I don't have to press hard the switching on the motor. Alright. So I think that's all over here. Okay, it's time for summary. Price of this motor starts from 385 US dollars before tax, which sets it on the price level of a TSD Z2 motor. Uh, 2.7 is offering uh, two power versions, 750 watt and 1000 watt of uh, nominal power with 160 Nm of torque. Uh, there will be two uh, bottom uh, bracket versions, uh, 73 mm, which is over here, and 100 mm BSA type. Uh, they claim also that the uh, control is uh, UART type and fully programmable, but that's something I need to investigate in deeper. Uh, for the time being, I'm uh, really interested in mounting this motor on one of my bikes to see <laughs> what is this offering. So wait for another movie with a detailed test then. And in the meantime, enjoy spring rides and take care. Bye bye.